all my DVDs. Ahoy hoy everybody and welcome to the next part of my look at my DVD collection. Previous parts available on a playlist. Bloody bloody blah, let's get cracking. So first up in this batch we have The Broken, which is a horror film starring the divine Lena Headey. Oh. I'm just, I'm just reading, I'm familiarising myself by reading the blurb and what I can and can't say. So, at a party at Lena Heed, in Lena Headey's house, a mirror is broken. There's lots of, ooh, seven years bad luck. The next day, she sees another version of herself driving a car in the opposite direction to her. Um, and then mysterious things start to happen. Let's put it that way. But good example of the genre, as I've said in other videos. Um, brilliant performance by Lena. This is Flash Gordon, a film I'm sure you're all familiar with. If you're not, watch it. It's on telly enough. You should have plenty of opportunities. Uh, a camp classic. Brilliant soundtrack by Queen. Just one of the best films ever, really, in a fun, enjoyable way. This is a dusty copy, for some reason, of Love Live Long. A strange little film by Mike Figgis. It's when he was experimenting with... He might still be doing it, actually. I haven't, not quite sure what he's done recently. Um, with handheld cameras and using iPhones and things like that to make films. Uh, basically, he was invited to film the Gumball Rally, which is a car race um, across Europe, I think it is. But instead, he's sort of made a film out of it based on uh, this woman played by Sophie Winkleman and she gets involved with Daniel LaPayne uh, it's hard to explain but it's it's quite a good quite a good it's not brilliant but it's it's, it's watchable um, and Sophie Winkleman's great in it and looks divine this is Fierce Creatures, so this was, it's not a sequel to, but the follow-up to Fish Called Wonder. Again, written by John Cleese. Um, but he gathered the same team, so Michael Palin, Kevin Klein, and Jamie Lee Curtis. But this time, um, Cleese runs a zoo. And it's going to be taken over, or it is taken over, I think, by... A Rupert Murdoch type character basically and he's who sends his son and they're both played by Kevin Klein to look after it and Jamie Lee Curtis is his partner but gets involved much like Rishko Wonder with Cleese. Uh, Michael Palin is one of the zookeepers. Great supporting cast Ronnie Corbett, Kerry Lowell, uh, Robert Lindsay. It's not as good as Fish Called Wonder but I enjoy it. This is one of the many versions of The Hound of the Baskervilles that I own. This is the mid 70s. Late 70s, 78. Comedy version starring Peter Cook and Dudley Moore and Spike Milligan, uh, Denham Elliott, Joan Greenwood, Hugh Griffith, Irene Handel, Terry Thomas, Max Wall, Kenneth Williams. Uh, Peter Cook and Dudley Moore co wrote it. It's. Not as funny as it should be, given the pedigree, but it's enjoyable and it's they managed to get the one leg too few sketch in here. So it's all, it's all right, but it could have been better. This is The Hole. This is a very early film for Kira. Um, I'm not sure if she shot this before Bend It Like Beckham or after, but it's a similar time. Uh, also stars for her. Thora Birch, Desmond Harrington and Freddie Fox. Is it Freddie Fox? I always get more confused over foxes. 
Lawrence Fox. Of course it is. Billy's ex. Um, it's in a... They go on a school field trip and they discover an old underground bunker and they get locked in it, basically. Um, but yes, it's good film. Enjoyable watch. And Kira's in it. <clears throat> this is Fear City. An Abel Ferreira film from the early 80s. I uh, can't see it date on here Same a disc no uh, from the early 80s anyway starring Melanie Griffith uh, and Tom Berenger and um, Ray Dawn Chong it's about a, a serial killer in the world of a strip joint um it's very stylized as is typical of Abel Ferreira it's, it's good enough it's not a great film but it's a decent watch uh this is and when did you last see your father this is a magnificent film Jim Broadbent Colin Firth um Basically, Colin Firth, as a kid, had a tumultuous relationship with his father, Jim Broadbent. Um, but then Jim Broadbent's dying, and it, it's, you know, it leads to lots of flashbacks to their youth and stuff like that. But it's just a really beautiful, beautiful film. Excellent cast. Um, Juliette Stevenson, Gina McKee. Claire Skinner, early role for Kerry Mulligan. Yeah, very good film, highly recommended. This is, to date, Paul Verhoeven's last Hollywood film, Hollow Man. Uh, Paul Verhoeven I'm a big fan of as a director. You're probably familiar with it. It's basically a take on The Invisible Man, but given a nice Verhoeven-style cynical twist. Uh... Excellent cast, Kevin Bacon, Elizabeth Shue. It's, it's, a, it's a good, enjoyable film. Seen on previous videos, if you've been watching these that I collect for Strictly Come Dancing DVDs, this is The Showstoppers from 2012. So in this one, Bruno, Len and Craig pick their favourite dances from the nine previous series, basically. So it's just another collection of various dances from the show but as a fan I enjoy it this is Scarface Oliver Stone wrote this uh, directed by Brian De Palma so that's two of my favourite directors there and then brilliant performance by Al Pacino uh, Mary Elizabeth, Ma Elizabeth Master Antonio Michelle Pfeiffer and other people whose names I can't remember. Just a really, it's just a classic film. Nice slipcase on this, embossed. Uh, yeah, just wonderful film. It is a Region 1 DVD of Fast Times at Ridgemont High. So this was an early 80s teen coming of age sex comedy type film. Uh, based, written by Cameron Crowe, this was his first thing he wrote. Directed by Amy Heckerling. Uh, it's basically the story of a bunch of teens in high school. But brilliant young cast who nearly all went on to great things. So Jennifer Jason Lee, Phoebe Cates, Judd Reinhold, Sean Penn, Nicholas Cage, Anthony Edwards, Forrest Whitaker. Yeah. Really good film. This is... Uh, BBC adaptation of Women in Love for D.H. Lawrence novel who I've mentioned in previous videos I really enjoy things based on D.H. Lawrence's well, films and TV series based on D.H. Lawrence's work I think he's, his work translates well this was a 
miniseries that was on BBC4 in 2011. Um, bit of a story here. I was in London seeing some shows and I went in HMV and this was on my shelf and I thought, oh, that's not even been on telly yet. So I bought it and then it was withdrawn from sale because it had come out too early and it wasn't on telly for another three or four months. Um, but yeah, it's a really good adaptation of a D.H. Lawrence film. Excellent cast. Uh, Rosamund Pike, Rachel Sterling, Roy Kinnear, that bloke whose name who I recognise and whose name I can never remember. And it is Joseph Maul. Yeah, very good. This is The Ranch. This is a Region 1 DVD. Uh, this is a, basically a story about a bunch of girls in a brothel in... does it say where? Re just outside Reno. Uh, but it's really good. It's some nudity in it, but it's a good drama about their lives and... yeah, good film. This is The Day After Tomorrow. Uh, it's lenticulously, but it doesn't really do much. Uh, so this was from Roland Emmerich, who made Independent Day. I'm sure you're familiar with this film. It's basically climate change causes the world to freeze over. And it's, you know, the action and adventure that ensues from that. But it's, yeah, it's a fun little film. This is British comedy, I Want Candy. Uh, so Tom Riley and Tom Burke decide to make a porn film, aided by their friend Michelle Ryan. And so they get Candy Five Ways, played by Carmen Electra, who's an American porn star. They manage to get her to come over to be in it. Um, but it's, yeah, it's a fun and funny and I'm being helped by the cat. She's in and out today. Um, British comedy. Very well acted. Very enjoyable. And although it's about porn, it's not particularly saucy. This is National Lampoon's Loaded... This isn't easy for you to say. Uh, National Lampoon's Loaded Weapon 1. Uh, so this was a spoof in the style of Airplane and Naked Gun and... Scary Movie, although this predated Scary Movie. Uh, and it's sort of a takeoff of Lethal Weapon, starring Emilio Estevez and Samuel L. Jackson. Uh, Navy Seals as well, that sort of stuff. But yeah, it's just a fun, typical of that style, but a fun film. A couple more. This is A Knight's Tale. Um, which in my head I've shown you before, but I think I've just talked about it related to other DVDs. I love this film. This is a Region 1 import. Again, I think I got this before it was even in the cinema over here. So this is Heath Ledger playing a knight in the 14th century. Um, and... William Thatcher. He's a... sorry, he's a... he's not a knight because he's a... he's a squire to a knight. Um, who I think, if memory serves, is, was a drunkard. And so he stood in for him and he won. And so he passed himself off as a nobleman and takes the jousting world by storm. But it's all very rock and roll and modern the way they do it. Um, and then you've got his page is played by Alan Tudyk. Uh, Mark Addy is a friend of theirs. Can't remember exactly what his character... Oh, he might be... I think Mark Addy was the night or oh, i might be wrong there long time since i've watched it but i do enjoy it um then ah uh, brain's gone dead as to his name ah why aren't you written on my back i'm married to jennifer connelly been in everything why is your name gone out of my head? Ah! Him! Plays Geoffrey Chaucer. Who acts as sort of a PR, you know, man for William. 
And he falls in love with a divine Shannon Sossaman. But yeah, just a really enjoyable film, despite the blanks in my memory from it. Oh, that's going to bug me. Anyway, and finally for this video, this is Aria, which is a portmanteau film. I think that's what they have to describe it. Uh, so it's ten directors who make little short films based on opera arias. Uh, but it's Nick Rowe, Ken Russell, Julian Temple, Robert Altman, Bruce Beresford, Jean-Luc Godard and some other people whose names I'm not familiar with. Uh, brilliant cast, Bridget Fonda, Teresa Russell, Tilda Swinton, Liz Hurley, John Hurt, Beverly D'Angelo. Some of the little shorts are better than others. It's not a sit-down background type film because it's short story so you've got to watch it all and you've got to be in the mood for it but I enjoy it. That's Aria. So that's it, that's half of this fourth shelf done. Uh, over four videos, so four more for the next half. Which I might get, yeah, four more for the next half probably. Then the big, but I'm thinking out loud, you don't need to hear this. Thank you for watching, like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in another video. Thanks, bye.